The previous video talked about the interaction of powers and limits for the federal government. For state governments, the general approach is similar, but there are some important differences. Our big picture remains the same, with three main categories of constitutional conversation. There needs to be a source of power, and that power may not be used in ways that violate structural limits or individual rights. These categories are the same when we're talking both about the federal government or the state governments. The biggest difference between state and federal governments involves the source of power. The political theory behind the federal government is that it was created by we the people when we adopted the Constitution. The federal government only has those powers that the Constitution gives it. But for states, the theory is different. The states weren't created by the U.S. Constitution. At least the original states existed before the U.S. Constitution ever did. So the states aren't limited to exercising only those powers contained in a list. The political theory behind American state governments is that they are freestanding, sovereign governments. They can do anything that any nation could do. With regard to sources of power, that means there's no specific list or enumeration of a state's powers. The state has all the same powers of any sovereign nation, and in particular, it can make laws on any subject. Sovereign governments have what are sometimes called police powers. Now, this term is not limited to our current understanding of the police as an organized body of law enforcement officers. As it's used in American constitutional discourse, the police power is the power to enact laws for the health, safety, welfare, and morals of the community. A law that gives authority and money to a police department staffed by police officers would certainly be one use of the police power. But the power is broader than that. Using the police power, a state could pass a law making it illegal to sell heroin or a law imposing speed limits on highways, or a law creating a university, or a law requiring restaurants to get licenses and be subject to health department inspections, and so on. Anything that is good for the health, safety, welfare, and morals of the community. What this means for our diagram is that on the level of powers, a state may enact laws on any subject. Whether it actually does enact a given law on a given subject will be the result of political judgments. But there are no constitutional limits on the types of laws a state may enact. This does not mean that state powers have no limits. State constitutions are written to include significant numbers of limits. Some of these are structural limits, things like state-level separation of powers. And some are individual rights. So there are limits on state governments found in state constitutions. In addition, the U.S. Constitution imposes some limits on state governments also. This slide allows us to easily compare the federal and state governments. The federal government is represented by a black vase, state government by a gray vase. In this and later diagrams, the state vase will appear to be wider than the federal one. That's because states have authority to enact laws on any subject. So just as a starting point, the state has more powers in more areas. By contrast, the federal government may enact laws only using enumerated powers in the federal constitution. When we have a powers conversation for state governments, it's actually pretty short and easy. We don't have to think through what's on an enumeration or a list because there is no list. For states, we simply say, this is a sovereign government. It can pass laws on any topic. And it has police power, which covers almost every law you can imagine. Turning to limits, the U.S. Constitution is subject to limits that are found in the U.S. Constitution. The states, meanwhile, are subject to limits that may be found both in the state's own Constitution and in the U.S. Constitution. 